Hi, everyone. Uh, hello. <laughs> uh, can we start now? Yeah, sure. Mission? Yes, sure. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, good, uh, go, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, I'm very privileged to have a missing limb from uh, uh, University of Brooks, UK. And uh, she is the founder of uh, Cut of Ink and a passionate advocate of youth literacy, ha having a recognized as a high performance and fast track to senior position in the multiple global multinational companies, which are only in 20% in 20s. Nowadays, Mi Feng coaches young light performing executives and entrepreneurship to navigate complexity and lead, and lead the way more effectively to create sustainable success. Mei Feng is a cultural enthusiast and a travel to 37 countries and now more in the counting. So I'm handing over the session to Mei Feng Ling for uh, starting the uh, today's session. Sure. Thank you so much, Dr. Vijendra. Hi, yeah. everyone. If you guys can hear me, can I get a quick yes in the chat box so that I make sure I want to make sure that you guys can um, hear me so we can have a very fun session together. And thank yes. you so much, Dr. Vijendra, for the very kind invitation. So as shared right now, I am a professional career coach, mainly working with uh, young professionals to grow their careers online and offline. So in my past life before being a career coach, um, I was in the corporate world for 11 years. I am a trained accountant, just like you guys, very similar technical background. I am a trained accountant and over the years, I've just gradually climbed up the corporate ladder and ultimately ended, the, ended up as the head of governance at Standard Chartered Bank. So today what we are going to do is a um, one of my signature talks, which is called Becoming Future Ready in a Digital World. So for this talk, I'm very excited to share a bit more with you because I've done this for participants across 25 countries and counting and more than 300 participants also. So very excited to have everybody here. So one quick thing I will quickly address. So, you know, when whenever, um, whenever my host speaks up my bio and I say that I've been to 37 countries or more, people tend to ask me, oh, so have you been to my country? Right? I think that's the, the very natural um, question. So yes, I have been to India many times as well, um, especially in my role at Standard Chartered Bank. I used to travel to India every quarter to meet my team in Bangalore. And I've also visited banks in Mumbai, Kolkata, and so forth. So very excited to connect again with the community. I really appreciate the invite. So without further ado, we, uh, I'll be sharing a couple of slides. So in the meantime, if you have any questions, you can put it in the chat box and I'll answer it at the end of the sharing. All right? Yes. Okay. Hold on. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes. All right. Let me... Look for oops. Okay, great. So let's begin. Um, again, I am my name is Mei Ping. I'm a career coach, and for a very quick guide, I've also include, included the QR link if you want to check out my profile. And thank you everyone for joining today. I hope that you have already had a good lunch and had your chai break already, so we can have a fun 60 minutes together. Again, hey, I'm Mei Ping. I'm a chartered accountant of the UK, Singapore, and also a qualified compliance professional. So in the past 11 years in the corporate world, I was with Standard Chartered Bank, Visa, and Ernst & Young. And nowadays, I am a certified career coach and have been collaborating with universities and education organizations to organize talks and share career tips for students, fresh graduates, as well as other corporate professionals looking to advance their careers. Just a little bit about me. And in terms of my corporate experience, um, which is the bit that I really want to share with you guys, what it actually takes to move up quickly and enjoy career success that is really long term, right? So I started in a very small company in Penang, Malaysia called KCK and Associates as an auditor. And gradually I moved on to Singapore as a senior associate with Ernst & Young, which is one of the biggest accounting firms in the world, um, auditing 
banking and asset management industries. Later on, I moved to join the regional visa team. It was an internal audit team where I pretty much traveled all over the world, um, mainly in Asia and Americas, reviewing all the visa officers. So it gave me a lot of um, perspective dealing with people from all over the world, understanding how they work, how they communicate and so forth. And that also aligns with my personal interest of traveling as well, which to give you a bit more perspective. And later on, I joined Standard Chartered Bank um, initially as a senior associate and gradually moving up to manager and director and ended up heading the governance team for the global financial institutions as well as the fintech portfolio, basically managing teams and projects in 43 markets. So I hope that the sharing today will give you guys a bit more perspective on what it actually takes not just in your country or my country, in Malaysia or Singapore, but really across 43 countries, some of the common themes that I've seen in high performance and some of the tips for you to how to identify certain skills gap in yourself that you can start working on right now while you are students. So you, you do have quite a number of, um, uh, quite a bit of time to start practicing these skills so that when you are going into the job market, you're, you're starting out in your career, you're already you know, one, one leg up compared to everyone else. So hopefully uh, we can cover a little bit more in this session. So nowadays, um, I'm the founder of my own company called Got A Ping, what I call Creating Future leader, Leaders. So I mainly work with um, individuals and companies on leadership skills, communication, as well as general future ready skills because the, the new business world will continue to be more complex than ever. And particularly with the coronavirus, Hitting, hitting us in the past few months, I think everybody started to feel like, okay, this is actually not, you know, we can't go back to the, the normal, right? So we all have to start navigating new challenges and very complex challenges at that. So the faster you can pick up the skills that allow you to, um, to position yourself well in a very dynamic environment, then the higher your chances to thrive when other people might actually be struggling during this time. So mainly nowadays, what I do is executive coaching. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I also do group training as well as uh, being a speaker, such as online webinars, such as this one, to share tips, ideas with you guys. Okay, so what will we be doing in the next 60 minutes is basically four things. The first part is that I'll go through how to identify your current human skills gap that you can enhance to become future ready. So this is really important, right? Because if you cannot identify what are your skills gap, you will not be able to take the appropriate action or take the appropriate learning to address it. Right? So the first step to identify, um, the first step to improving is always identifying what you are lacking. So that could be maybe some technical skills and some soft skills as well. Second bit is that we're going to explore a little bit how you can develop a deeper understanding of your personality and default behaviors. So this is a very psychological part which a lot of people ask me, how come some people seem to do well in certain areas when I'm not so good at certain things? So the, the real and practical answer is really this. There are some skills that are more natural to your personality type that will result in certain default behaviors. So today I'll share with you a little bit more how to identify your personality type, your, your strengths and weaknesses, so that again, you can better identify the skills gap that you may have, then take the appropriate learning to improve yourself. Okay. The second part, we are going to talk a little bit more about how to identify mindsets and judgment pitfalls that can stop you from thriving in the future workplace. Because the workplace is moving, um, is um, changing very quickly. So the old mindset, maybe how you know how we felt five years or even three years ago, might be changing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry to disturb you. Sorry, sorry, sorry to disturb uh -huh. you. Can, yes. can you please share the screen once again? Oh, can you guys see the screen or no? Yeah, yeah. Please uh, share the screen once again. Share the screen once again. Hold on. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me. Okay, can you guys see my screen now? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. Did, did you guys catch the earlier slide or should I just go back quickly? No, yeah, no, no. It is, it is okay. Good. You can continue okay. from here. Sure. So as I was saying, we're going to talk a little bit more on how to identify mindset and judgment pitfalls that can stop you from thriving in the future workplace. And lastly, how to actually adapt to the modern way of working that can drive equal 
or better productivity. So I think as students right now, you guys are in a very, um, in a very, I would say, privileged position to be able to see all these things really rapidly evolving before stepping into the workplace. Because I have a lot of clients who are currently working right now and they are struggling to understand and trying to adapt to this um, very digital world and you know how to run meetings online and online webinars. So that is quite new. So I think for, for you guys who are students, there's always um, a lot of space and time to explore a bit more on how you can get comfortable with these new modern methods and start practicing it even while studying so that you can be even more ready than ever. All right. Okay, so are you ready for the future of work and business? I hope yes. And I thank everyone for spending your afternoon with me to really upgrade yourself. So thank you very much. So nowadays, we know that technology is at the heart of a future-ready workforce to run businesses. So we hear a lot about a digital transformation, the AI age, and so forth. But I think the bigger question that we all need to ask, and maybe have already been asked, but not very nicely addressed, is what does it mean for us, the humans, right? The ones, you know, we, the graduates, and really needing to adapt, and what, how does it affect our career, right? How does it affect jobs in the future. So this is a common question that is currently being asked with different people having very different views. So I'll share a little bit more on my view. So in my view, the main purpose of technology is to automate many things. And the purpose has always been to drive efficiency. So understanding the purpose helps a lot. Because if you start thinking that, okay, that IT is going to take over our jobs, right? So what does that mean for me? And how is my education going to help me? That is a very unhelpful thinking. So the point is to first understand, number one, technology is there to make things more efficient. But does it mean that it can be very effective without your thinking, without the knowledge, without the education that you receive? Will you be able to really use these technological tools to the full advantage and add value to your future employer or your future company. So that's really a really important question to keep in mind. Okay, moving on. So yes, we need technical skills, but digital skills are definitely not the only part that we need to develop. Because ultimately, um, computers can definitely count faster than, than us, right? structure things faster than us. However, what we do have is to focus on the human skills so that we can work alongside technology. Right, so the keyword here is alongside, because I would say that the people in which the jobs may be replaced are the ones who have, haven't quite figured out how to use technology to the full potential to help them in their daily work. So I can give you an example, right? So in the past, when I was with Standard Chartered Bank, I used to run um, the governance team. So in my team, I have um, team members who are doing performance reporting. I also have quants. Um, data analysts, their, their main purpose is structuring data, creating it in a way that can be understood. So simple thing is that if I'm fully reliant on technology, yes, I, the system can turn out numbers for me, but ultimately, who is that person to interpret the data in a way that explains to me what I need to know to make decisions for the business? So your role going forward will be really the bridge and how to really leverage technology so that you can work better with your teams, with your bosses, with your clients, and with your customers. So the key is working alongside technology. So it's all these interpersonal skills, social, emotional skills, which computers don't have, because each and every one of us brings a different skill set, a different value to your organization or to your businesses. So that's something that we need to continue to sharpen because while we cannot control the speed of the AI transformation, what we can control is ourselves. So we need to start looking at ourselves and how we are continuously improving. So at the end of the day, technology cannot replace human judgment. So we need to level up our human skills, which is what we're going to do today. So the need for future skills is now. And I purposely want to add this, um, this slide in because right before the coronavirus hit, a lot of, uh, when I speak to a lot of um, you know, corporate professionals, and when we talk about you know, AI, digital transformation, what would that mean to the future of work? They tend to brush it off because they, they used to tell me that, oh, you know, it's another three to five years time. You don't really need to worry about it so much, right? 
we're all going to the office, everything is, is normal. But I think with the whole pandemic, the, you know, the skills for the future, the workplace of the future is already happening right now. So the faster you can recognize it, the faster you can actually take action and then really leveling up yourself so that you are ready um, you know, when you graduate and ready to add value, even, even as a student now, even as a student now. So, so we're going to do something really fun right now. Um, I will give you guys 10 seconds or maybe 15 seconds to grab a notebook, a piece of paper or a pen because normally in my sharings, I want to make sure that you guys have some tangible takeaway um, because real learning happens when you take action after the, after the session. So grab your pen, paper, notebook, pencil, whatever that is in the next 10 seconds, and then we'll begin. Okay, so I hope you have gotten yourself the tools that you need to, to try, which is the first step is paying attention because if you don't pay attention, then it doesn't matter how much um, knowledge that you absorb, nothing is going to stay because nowadays, you know, there are a lot of um, information out there. So sometimes when we, when we listen to something, when we see something, we think that we will remember, but in most instances, we, we do not because there's just so much more information coming in in the next minute, next hour, and next day or so. Okay, so let's begin. So normally when I, when I work with um, students and even my you know, uh, corporate professional clients, I like to get them to assess what are their existing skills gap. Like I said, if you don't know what your skills gap are, it is going to be very challenging to improve. So we will have 12. So I'll, I, I'll explain very, at a very high level how to identify if you have a problem with this skill. And because these are you know, interpersonal skills, uh, when you speak to most people, and even for you watching the screen right now, ask yourself, do you have a problem in any of these areas? And based on the hundreds of people I work with, most of them tell me they don't have a problem. They don't have a problem. So that's the fun part. So when we start right now, I want you to actually assess, um, rate yourself from one to 10, 10 being that you, are, you have really mastered this skill in your life, in your studies and you know even in any part-time job that you and me have taken and one being that you have not considered this skill at all you may have heard of it but you know you never really quite taken it seriously so I want you to rate yourself from one to ten as I go along and I'll give you guys some action steps right after this okay let's begin so the first thing is basically the art of communication so most people I speak to say they don't have a problem with communication however how do you know if you have a communication problem? So when you communicate or when you talk to someone else, uh, be it your, your friend, your um, lecturers, and your professors and so forth, how often do you hear um, the following responses? I don't understand what you're saying. Can you repeat that? I just don't get it. What's your point? So these four are actually really, really common um, questions to, to pinpoint that you have a communication issue. And I'll tell you why, why that is. Because the main purpose of communication is that it is a two-way party. So there's a person sharing information, there's a person absorbing, and then there's a feedback loop. But nowadays, when we communicate, we tend to focus on expressing ourselves, but we don't always listen or we don't always focus on whether the other person is understanding what you're saying, right? Because if the other person doesn't understand it, then basically you're just talking to yourself. It is a monologue. So you've just wasted your energy and effort to explain something that the other person has not completely picked up as well. So this is a skill that will help you in your life as well as in your career later on. So it's a very, very important skill. Number two. Hey. Uh, there's a bit of noise. So uh, if you guys can mute, I appreciate that. All right. So number two is the power of deep listening. So nowadays, because there's just a lot of information out there, I have noticed that people are very focused on talking. You don't really spend enough, enough time listening and really trying to understand what the other person is trying to convey. So how do you know if you are not a good listener? Because most people think that you are, they are very good listeners. So how do you know? It's, it results in misinterpretation of what you're trying to say. Because if you don't listen deeply, what is the immediate result? 
is you tend to make assumptions. You tend to jump into conclusion immediately. And you may take away something that is not intended by the person that shared this with you. So I'll also give you an example. So in the past, when I was based in Singapore as Standard Chartered Bank, I worked with my team members from all around the world. And for some team members, it, it, it was quite easy to identify that they have this um, deep listening gap because whenever they pick up the phone and call me, they do most of the talking. So let me ask you this question. If you're doing most of the talking, then are you actually listening? And if you're not listening, how do you know if your team member, your manager, your boss, or your professor is telling you something and you have actually really understood it? Right? So the next time you're in a conversation, I want you to, or maybe right now, reflect on the past couple of conversations that you had and ask yourself, in terms of 100%, how much in terms of percentage you were the one talking? And then what about the other person? So ideally, you know, in a, in a very good conversation, it would be 50-50. But if you reflect and, and think that, okay, you know, maybe I, I, I was talking 80-90% of the time, that's when you can identify, okay, maybe this is a skill that you may need to listen a little bit more. Because listening, I think general communication is really the biggest issue in corporate right now because everybody, um, they don't spend time listening. We make assumptions on the deliverable that needs to be done. And then we, we go out, spend days, weeks to do a piece of work. And then when you ultimately present it to your boss, it was not what they wanted. So that's the one of the, I would say the biggest challenge. And it's something that if you can start practicing right now, it really will help a lot along the way. Okay. So the next one is emotional intelligence. So what is emotional intelligence? So simply put, I would call it being tactful. Tactful in the sense that trying to identify the emotions in yourself, knowing when you are um, excited, when you are frustrated, when you are stressed out, and also able to understand that emotion in someone else. So I'll give you an example how to identify, how to identify this. Have you ever spoken to a person and then the person got really uncomfortable or they got really frustrated or very annoyed or very angry, but you didn't manage to identify that. And eventually the person just blew up and just said, please stop talking. I don't like this or I don't like that. So there is a process that the person goes through and it is your role to develop your emotional intelligence so that you are able to identify before the volcano bursts is probably the, the most layman uh, way I'll say it. And that's it, especially for you guys who are um, engineering students, um, that is, I think, more mechanical and more structured, this, this emotional intelligence part may be something that you definitely want to look into because not all the time everything is just numbers and statistics, which is really helpful, but sometimes we need to get a sense of like how people feel when you convey the, st the stats, when you convey the process, when you convey the structure. Then you can get a better buy-in from your stakeholders. So right now, maybe you guys can practice with uh, Dr. Bijendra after the session just to see how you guys have improved. Okay, so the next section, um, the three parts. So leadership starts with managing yourself, uh, managing your boss's expectation, as well as creating win-win relationships, really starts, um, really relies on the first three that we talked about. So some people ask me, oh, Meiping, you know, I'm only a student. Um, how can I start being a leader? If I only start as a um, very junior executive, right, it's my first job, how do I, how do I prepare to become a team leader? So the, the secret is actually this. You need to learn leadership skills before you are in a position of a team leader. And, and how do you start doing that? It's by managing yourself. So one good way to identify if you have this problem is that, I'll ask you a very simple question, right? Do you make promises that you cannot fulfill? Do you say that you're going to do something, but you end up not doing it? And then you, you don't you know, let the other person know. So the fastest way to identify if you have problem kind of like managing yourself, managing your commitments, I would say that is the question. And this is something that personally, I have decided not to promote certain people because they don't have skill set to manage themselves. Because if you always need a team leader or a manager to manage you and manage your workload, manage your uh, portfolio, it means that you are, you are never going to be ready for that, um, for that leadership role. So as a student, how you can start is to really look at your commitments and ask yourself the things that you have promised, have you actually delivered them? 
if not, why? And then really do some deep dive reflection on how often does this happen and actually why it happens. Because if you don't do this, then it will lead to problems in the next part, which is managing your boss's expectation. So no boss, right? No manager, no team leader, or no, no professor wants to hear you promise something and set up a certain expectation, but ultimately not able to deliver. Because ultimately what happens is that it affects your reputation and your reputation as a very good professional, as a value contributing employee to the company. And in this kind of challenging time right now, what we want to do is to make sure that we demonstrate as much value as possible, right? And the last thing here is creating win-win relationships. I think this is a lost skill in today's world. Because if today's world, like if you look at social media and so forth, right, you will hear a lot of people talking about themselves. It's all about me. But I'll tell you a trick here. It is about win-win. So how do you identify that in yourself? I want you to think back on the past requests or conversations that you have had with people and I want you to ask yourself right how much of that was just you asking for something that you want did you try to understand what the other person could you know how your request could also benefit the other person or was it just about you 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 and this is also a very common challenge in the um, the real working world whereby people will continue making requests and continue to make requests, but not understanding how you can get buy-in from the other person. So I'll also give you an example. Um, on LinkedIn, I'm actually very, very um, active. So I connect with a lot of students. And one thing I also did notice is that for some students, the moment I connect with them, they will bombard me with a long list of requests. Hi, Mayping, please help me with... And then I, I, I get like a bullet list of things that I am supposed to help them. So this is not how you build relationship. Um, you want to take note of how you can build a long-lasting relationship that people feel um, comfortable, they want to continue to, uh, to engage with you. So that's that one tip to identify if you are actually having um, problems. So it may not perpetuate into a big problem right now because you are still studying, but if you leave it unaddressed, it might become a big problem later on. So I want you to take note of this point, all right? So until now, I hope that you're still uh, rating yourself as I'm sort of going through. So the last six skills I would say are interrelated. So clear and critical thinking, art of decision making, being creative, adapting, time management, and so forth. So I would say that generally for uh, my clients who are engineers or engineering students that I work with, normally clear and critical thinking comes quite naturally. So that is a good thing. Um, one thing you might want to take note of is whether creativity is compromised because everything is so logical that you might just, carve, just just ignore being creative. So how do you be creative and be adaptable, especially during this very challenging time? Ask yourself this question. Is it just, are you just accepting one way of doing things? Or if someone asks you, do you have any ideas? Can we do this in a different way? Do you, all, do you, do you think deeply about that? Or you tend to just say, oh, this is, this is what has always been done. So I will just stick to what we have all, you know, whatever that we are doing right now. Uh, I heard a little bit of noise. Uh, is it a question? Uh, thanks. Sorry to disturb you again. Uh, can yeah. you share? Uh, can you share the screen once again? Oh yeah, sure. Sorry to disturb you. Yeah, no worries. No worries. All right. Can you guys see it now? Yes, it's fine. Thank you. Okay, no worries. And don't worry so much about um, these 12 um, skills. I actually have it on, on my website and I also have a podcast detailing a little bit more on what you need to know. But the main purpose of getting you guys to do a rating right now is just that you have an initial idea of the, the challenges or the gaps that you need to improve so that you can target your learning a little bit better after this. All right? Okay. So moving on to the next part, which I think is, is actually quite important, is understanding your personality. Because the way that you are wired, it affects how you think, feel, and behave, and it also affects how you engage with other people. So how many of you actually understand your personality very well? And why I like to cover personalities because there are some skills that are naturally, some people naturally you know, might be weaker at because of their personality. So now I'll go through very, very quickly before um, personality um, areas that you might want to take note of and put some quick notes if you feel that you are in one of those categories. The first one is you're an extrovert. That means that you're pretty energetic 
and fast talker. You get very um, excited when you meet new people and so forth. If you're an introvert, that means generally you're more quiet and you're a slightly slower processor. You need to think things through. So why does extrovert and introvert is important? Because this gives, your personality actually gives you an idea on the skills that you need to work on. So let's immediately think, right? So if you're an extrovert, what you think is the biggest problem, biggest skill that you need to work on? It is the power of deep listening. Because as an extrovert, you are most of the time busy talking. So if you're busy talking, then you will not be listening. And that, that could be an issue. So that might be the immediate skill that you want to look into. So if you're an introvert, right, being a more quiet person, there could be one thing that um, might be a little bit more challenging than others. And I think that is about managing your boss's expectation. Because if you're very quiet, you're always sitting in the corner doing your work, right? Then, then, then how are you actually going to engage with your, your boss and make sure that your boss also understands the value that you're bringing to the team? So in this way, by understanding your personality, I want you to then go back to the 12 skills that I shared earlier and just ask yourself bit by skill by skill, right? How does it affect? And which are the ones that you're naturally not so good at? So the next part is whether you are intuitive, which is the person that's more focused on the big picture outcome thinking, or you're a person who is a sensor that is more focused on the small details, focused on the very detailed structure of doing things. So if you are intuitive, meaning that you're always focused on the big picture, um, there could be some challenges as well. And particularly, I would think that I would say time management is a problem because I've worked with um, a lot of uh, managing directors and big, big bosses, CEOs who are very big picture. But what happens is that they, they actually tend to struggle with managing their time because they're always thinking of the final outcome. They don't tend to think of how are they going to carve out and create time to make sure that they have enough time to fulfill the objectives. So if you're a big picture thinker, I challenge you to think about how you are managing your time to make sure that you can be as effective as possible to achieve all your goals. And if you're a person that is very focused on the nitty gritty, the small, small things, so the key skill I want you to think about is clear and critical thinking. Because if you are very focused on the small details, right, how do you make sure that you are actually thinking about a certain challenge, a certain issue deeply enough? Because if it's, you know, when you have too much data, too much details all jumble out, how are you able to identify the most important point that you need to pull out and then communicate onwards. Because I've also worked with um, a lot of people who are sensors, focused on small details, and they really find it challenging to move up the ranks in the, co in the corporate world. Because at a certain point in time, uh, to become a manager or team leader, you do need a certain level of big picture thinking. So that might be something that for you guys who are more ambitious, you want to um, achieve more in your career later on, might be something that you are interested to look into as well. Okay, moving on. So the other part of your personality is whether you are a thinker or a feeler. So a thinker, like I said, I think most um, engineering students are very logical in nature. That's how you guys are very successful in engineering. However, one thing is that if you are too logical and always wanting to defend your um, point, think about how it would affect relationships with other stakeholders. So for example, if you tend to, if you feel very strongly about a point and then you end up debating and arguing with your professor about it, think about how it actually affects that relationship that you have with your professor, right? How can you build longer term relationship and still, you know, have a, a friendly and positive debate without always wanting to win? I think that's the biggest advice I will share with um, engineering students because I also have clients who are engineers who are currently facing this issue right now after they have worked for 10 years, right? So if you feel that you're more of a feeler kind of person, means a person that is um, very too collaborative sometimes, right? very emotive, uh, related stories, then it may affect your abilities as a leader. Because as a leader, you may need to uh, give guidance and um, have a, take a position on certain things. So if you feel kind of uncomfortable um, telling people that should they do, should do certain things, it does affect your ability to become a team leader later on. So the earlier you can identify this, personality um, characteristic in yourself, the faster you can then learn how to become a little bit more logical in your approach. And the last part of personality is judging, which is a person that always have an action plan. So this person, when you, if you, so for those of you, for those of you who have, for today, right, today we are having this session at two o'clock, right? 
So for those of you who have already planned out your whole day today, okay, to come to Dr. Bijendra's webinar with Mayping today at 2 o'clock, what you are actually going to do in the morning and what are you going to do after. So that's how you know that you are pretty much a person with a specific action plan, the judging type. So what is the challenge here? It's actually adaptability. Because when things change, you may find it very difficult to adapt because you've already planned out the whole day, right? So you've planned out your, your career, you've planned out your life, right, in a much bigger scale. Um, so when things change, you may find it a little bit challenging to adapt. The other side of the personality type is the person that just kind of goes with the flow. So using today's webinar example again, so you are the person that, okay, it doesn't matter what I do today, but as long as I make it for the 2 o'clock webinar, it is a win already, like you, you did achieve something today. So people with this kind of personality, you may want to take note um, on, um, I would say, managing bosses' expectation as well and managing stakeholders' expectation. Because if you're a person that just kind of wings it and just, you know, you do what you feel like doing, you know, um, with a spur of instinct, but other people, when, when they work with you, they may not be this kind of character. So some people may like a little bit more certainty in what they do and what to expect of you as well. So if you're this kind of a, a more creative, free soul kind, so you may want to start practicing having a little bit more structure in your day. So maybe having two or three things that you must definitely achieve rather than just kind of a wing it, a wing it attitude in general. So these four personality types, I want you to just take a couple of, put in a couple of points in your um, notebook or a piece of paper and just really reflect after this session to see if there are any more things that you can help you identify a little bit more in your personality type that can be helpful for you uh, as part of your personal development also. Okay, so at this point, can you guys still see my slide? If I can just get a quick confirmation, I think that would be helpful. Can you uh, share it once again? You guys can't see. Okay, yeah. It's okay, no worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries, no worries. I've kept, I've kept my slides very simple just, just to make sure that you know, we can have the conversation flowing as well. Yes, yes. Okay, so this next part is really thoughts around, techno thoughts, thoughts around technology. So one thing you may will need to know is that as students, as you know, Generation Z and towards the end of the, the millennial um, era, is when you enter the workplace, you will meet other team members who didn't grow up in the same era of technology as you. So some of them, they may find technology quite disruptive. They, are, they may be uneasy with it compared to you, know, you guys who are a lot younger as well. So the main purpose of this slide is to, I want you to think about technology. How do you perceive technology in terms of how it can help you or not help you? The actual challenge I see with um, younger people around technology is that everybody treats social media as just something that we, we can just continue to share about our lives. So as I said, you know, I am very um, active on LinkedIn, which is a professional networking platform. And of course, there are other various social media as well, right? So, you know, Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and so forth. But the real challenge is this, every single platform has a different purpose. And for those of you guys who are on LinkedIn, and right now LinkedIn is really very popular, I want you to actually ask yourself, if you attend an interview and you get asked about your social media activities, will you be able to explain that clearly and justify why you have written certain things or why you have posted about certain things or not? Especially this is something I see a lot on, on LinkedIn where I see younger professionals treating LinkedIn as a, um, as, a as, as Instagram, I guess is the best way to put it, um, thinking, of, thinking that LinkedIn is very far away from their actual job, so hence they can just write whatever they want. Just a word of caution here because everything that you put out online, that is something that people make a judgment about you even before they meet you in person. So last time, you know, we used to say that the, the first time you meet an interviewer is your first impression. Now this is no longer the case. The impression that they get on you, of you online, that is the real first impression. So for example, when I used to hire team members, when I received the resume, one of the first things I will do is I will search, I will Google their name and I'll go to LinkedIn and look for them. So if I see something that I don't quite like, I, I would make a judgment about the person rightly or wrongly, and that's what a lot of HR do as well. So you guys who are ambitious, um, I, just one word of caution and one word of advice is to always think through what you are, going, what you are posting and you know, either if it's not positive or not neutral, 
I highly encourage you to bring it to a, a more appropriate platform that is the main purpose is not for professional networking and job search. All right. Okay, I'll move to the next slide. So uh, maybe Dr. Bijendra can let me know if you can see it. Is the next slide with the yes, telephone? Yes, yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so this is the, the last slide where I want to share a little bit of tips on how you can adapt to the modern uh, way of work, knowing that the modern workplace will likely be somewhat of a remote workplace, right? So there may be uh, less and less time we will be spending in the office and more and more time we will be spending online, which then creates some problems around productivity. Because during the pandemic, a lot of people had to work at home and some people find it very difficult to, to deliver their work um, to very difficult to be productive because they're just very uncomfortable with the environment in the in the office. You know, your your boss or your manager, your professor can come and knock on your table and say, "Hey, can you submit this?" But you know, when you're at home, when you're just kind of working on your computer, attending lessons on your computer, it might feel a little bit differently. Just that right now, just like right now, you guys are listening to this webinar. How many of you are actually scrolling Facebook or Instagram on your computer? Only you can answer this question, but. This point is really just to show you how easily distracted you can be, just you know, you and your laptop, and kind of not being in the office workspace that can allow you to be a bit more um, more focused. So there are just four points, uh, four points, four little tips here. Which is number one, focus on the objective. So every single piece that you're doing, whether it's a studies, you're doing a thesis, you are delivering a report at work later on. What is the ultimate outcome? What is expected of this piece of work? What is expected of this project that you're running right now? So that allows you to be more specific and more focused. And even if you, you have online calls with your team members, you can then focus on the objective. Number two, plan early and ahead. So sometimes, you know, when you, for you guys, you are studying, if you go to a university, sometimes it's you may not think it's important to plan ahead because you say, ah, it's okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see Dr. Bijendra later. I'll just pop by his desk and ask him this question. But in, in the modern workplace or the modern studies where you will see maybe more and more of these webinars, how can you plan early and also reduce surprises for yourself and for your professors or for your bosses later on? So forget the last minute habits. So if you need something and something's important, always plan it in, schedule it in, request for an appointment and be on time. Because reputation is something that you bring along in your career, right? So this is definitely one of the habits that you want to start, um, start practicing early on. So if you're the person that's always, always late for a meeting, never ever think that this, this habit will go away. It will never go away because you've never actually started working on it. Okay, the last two tips is continue to focus on social skills. So if you have a point, make sure that you have created the courage, you need to speak up and be heard. Because it's not the same case where you know you may be in a university and then uh, the professor may just try to get everyone to participate. But if you are doing a lesson online or in the future you may be in a remote working environment, if you don't speak up, then the manager wouldn't know what you are, how you are contributing. So in the past, I used to have a team in India. There are quite many of them, and the people who make the best impression on me are the people who spoke up during meetings because I can't meet my team face to face very often. So I tend to rely on the phone calls and the the video calls and so forth. So for the guys who don't speak up, then it's very difficult for me to know, you know, what are your thoughts? What are your views? How do you think we can do better? And then as a result of that, you tend to make a slightly less, uh, less of an impression that will definitely affect your career down the road in promotions and progressions and so forth. And last point is to get flexible on methods. Because ultimately, whether it's a phone call, it's a video call, it's a WhatsApp, the main purpose is to make sure that you continue to connect with the team. Because if you think that you need a face-to-face -face meeting to connect, then that's the old way of thinking. Now is how can we continue to connect dig digitally so that everybody knows that we exist and that we have a value that we can offer, maybe you know, for your other team members, right? for projects, and even for your, your job later on. Okay? So that's pretty much the, the end of the um, presentation. The main reason why I picked up some of these points is these are very common issues that I see in professionals who have worked three years, five years, 10 years, and even 20 years. So like I said, if you're a student right now, this is the best time for you to take some of the key pointers from today. So if you still have your notebook and paper open right now, I want you to actually quickly jot down what are your top three learnings from today's webinar and what kind of actions are you actually going to implement and take forward from today? 
Because if you're just going to listen to the webinar for the sake of listening, then there's actually no real learning. So I always encourage you guys to at least put in a couple of notes and then you can reflect on it later. And there's some key things that you will definitely take away from today. All right. So while you're putting in that little notes, um, I'm just going to share a couple, uh, two of my links with you. So like I said, I'm very active on LinkedIn. I mainly help um, people to achieve career growth online and offline. So do scan on the QR code very quickly. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm under the name Ming Ping, Career Coach. Or, and also I've also created a YouTube channel where I'll be sharing a little bit more career growth tips um, under the name Gotta Ping. So you can also feel free to subscribe. And going forward on weekends, I will try to do a live Q&A where you will be able to join and ask a quick question. And hopefully, I can give you some perspective as well. So this is one of the activities that I'm doing as a gift back to students and fresh graduates and hopefully help you guys to move on in your career. So I'm going to leave on this um, QR code very quickly and also encourage you guys, if you have any questions, can you put into the chat box right now? And I will answer them. I'll answer them quickly. All right. So for those of you guys who didn't manage to catch the QR code, just drop a quick note in the chat as well, and then I can flash up the screen later on also. Okay, are there any questions? Thank you, Finn. Uh, please, participant, if you have any query, then uh, put it in the chat box. And I want to say thank you so much to uh, Prakash Kumar for uh, sh sharing that the, he found the um, lecture very interesting. Thank you very much. All right, so um, no questions at all. This is really your best chance to, to ask any questions. Uh, normally, it's very difficult to book me for a, for a webinar. And yes. I, I also have a lot of, uh, I, I currently have 9,000 people on LinkedIn, so I'm still going through my, my messages to make sure that I reply to everybody on time. Um, but if you have a quick question, you know, please, please try to, try to um, put it right now. Yeah, some question is there from uh, in chat box. Okay, let me have a look. Uh, so if you don't mind sharing, what is SSB? Oh, okay, I think, I, I think there was an earlier question from Sunil. So answer Sunil's question yeah. first. Uh, so Sunil asks, ma'am, win-win relationship, please explain. Okay, so a win-win relationship is basically when you, are, when you guys are doing something, whether it's a deliverable or something that you're working together, who actually, who actually benefits from this exercise or this piece of work? Or is it only you benefiting and not the other person? So I actually give you a very real life example. So when you start working, and even right now, you may be doing projects. So let's say your project has five people. And there may be one person who's always saying that, hey, Sunil, can you please do this for me? Do that, do this, do that, do this for me. And you need to ask yourself, right, if you are the person making all these requests, if it's only for you, or how does it benefit the other person? How is it helpful to the other person to help you? Because the other person also has maybe his or her part of the a project they also need to contribute. So if you want to make a request, it's okay, but always make sure that you, you express to the other person, why is it helpful for them to help you? So in the context of work, right? Um, normally I, I, I used to spend at least four out of eight hours in meetings every day. And in every single meeting, everybody will ask me to, to give, to please help me with da, 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 all these things, right? So the people who can actually get the buy-in are the people who explain to me, oh, Mayping, if your team helped me with this, we can save time. We can be more effective. And then we can deliver this bit faster. So that convinces me to say, oh, okay, like there, there is a benefit to me helping you. So let's do it together. So how can you do something together rather than just requesting things just for yourself? Because ultimately, you will actually ruin that relationship that you have with that person. So even if you manage to get them to help you one time, the next time you ask, they wouldn't want to help you again. So that's their relationship ruined because maybe you were, you were too focused on yourself to try to get something only for yourself without caring about uh, how the other person feels also. All right. Um, have a look at the next question from Raj Sagar. The, um, the army selection process. So this is to become an army or is part of your engineering career? Doctor, if you can maybe share. Yeah, yeah. With me. <laughs> uh, sorry, Feng, that is uh, some another question is they want to ask. Uh, you, 
it is not from your side ah okay no right you can proceed to the next one okay sure so um i'm looking at the next question from ayush prabhat so let's stress a bit on intuitive personality Okay, so a person who is very intuitive basically is a very big picture thinker. Means they always, they are always very, they are always focused on what is the end goal. Ultimately, what is going to happen if we do this? What's the impact? So let's say, um, how and how do you know if you are more of an intuitive person? So you are a person who asks what and why. What are we trying to achieve? At the end of this, what is the outcome that we want? And why are we trying to do it? So it gives you a better understanding and helps you plan. Okay, next, you know, one, two, three, four, five years. What do I want, you know, down the road? Versus a sensor that's more focused on the here and now. So intuitive is always focused on the future. So if you're a person who's always thinking, oh, you know, after I graduate, what am I going to do? Right? What kind of jobs am I going to apply? Um, this kind of so forth. So maybe have a little bit more intuitive in your personality, because a sensor is pretty much a person that's very happy right now. They're very focused on the task at hand. So if you're a sensor, you'll be thinking, okay, tomorrow I'm going for this class, and like that's pretty much it. I'm just go, come back, that's it. Right. Okay, hopefully I've answered that question. Okay, so the next question is from Aditya Kumar. Ma'am, in upcoming days, online work of office happen to what extent? I would say that remote working will become more and more common, and especially in places like um, India. China and even my country, Malaysia, there are a lot of uh, shared services center. So in shared services center, basically, it's a it's a massive team supporting deliverables from other countries. So you may be an engineer that is based in India, but you may be supporting clients from the US or UK and so forth. So in terms of like FaceTime, you may have less and less with the stakeholders that you work with and add value to. Um, aside from that, because of the pandemic, a lot of companies are actually looking to save costs because you know having an office space definitely costs money as well. So they may start allowing people to uh, work from home. So in Malaysia right now, about people are spending at least two, three days a week working from home. So if you don't get comfortable communicating and um, really sharing your thoughts in a work from home situation, you may find it even more difficult when you go out there in a real job where you are paid a salary and then your boss is looking for you and then you, you attend a meeting but you don't speak and so forth. So it's just better to kind of get used to communicating online, appearing on video. Right? So some of you guys are very shy, you don't appear on video. So I highly encourage you guys to appear on video because it does help with video interviews as well. So in the past, when I interviewed for Visa, I did five, five or six rounds of interview. I've also interviewed for Google. All these are on video. So the faster you can get comfortable on video, it does help a lot in the interview process as well as the, in your actual job later on. All right. Okay. Uh, I'll just ans let me have a look at what the other questions. How, how can, okay, so one question from Mohit Singh. How can we deal with depression arising from comparing with others? So the first thing is to ask yourself, uh, what, I, what exactly are you comparing against? Is it the grades? Is it they have more uh, awards than you? What is it really? And I, I think a lot of times, like, depression happens. Um, I think sometimes it's, it's not depression. Sometimes it's, it's misdiagnosed. Sometimes you just feel unhappy. And it's very normal to feel unhappy, especially right now when you are in a class with, like, hundreds of people. And right now, there are so many other engineers out there. It's always easy to compare. But also focus on yourself. Focus on yourself. And the 12 skills that I shared in terms of the personality, you need to understand yourself a little bit better. Because for me, right, I can share a personal story. I'm actually an introvert. And in the corporate world right now, when you see people who, are, who talk louder than you, you tend to think that they are better than you. But the question is that, is it really true? Are they really better than you? Or because I can tell you that there are very, very different problems based on different personality types. So I think first thing is to understand what are you comparing against? And the second tip is, you see, a lot of, um, I guess, depression and anxiety happens when you, you have a lot of things on your mind. Because you, you tend to make it feel like, wow, it's a much bigger problem, you know? So I suggest you take a notebook and actually write, write down your concerns. Because sometimes when you look at it on paper, it is not as scary and not such a big problem as it seems. And for students, one other thing that I would advise, and this is something I personally do for myself, you can create a win journal. Win journal, W-I-N, win journal. So these are things that, you, um, that you yourself do well. Because if you're waiting for someone to tell you, say, hey, kudos, Mohi, you did well, then you're always relying on other people to tell you how good you are. 
and that will always be very frustrating and always create a lot of stress in your life. So you need to start celebrating. What do you think you're good at? Even if it's something small. And I can show you, this is my personal wind journal. You can see this blue book here, my screen. So this is something that I tell myself every day. What are the things that I do good at? Even if it's something very small. I can just say, okay, you know, today I recorded a YouTube video. That's the win for today. Today, let, let's say today when I finish this webinar, I'm going to write in my book. So I did a webinar for 100 students from uh, organized by Dr. Bijendra. To me, that's a win for me. It may not be a win for someone else, but it's a win for me. Until you learn how to acknowledge what you do good at, you will, you will never feel that you are worth as much as some other people's bit that they're trying to convey to you on social media. And especially for you guys on LinkedIn, this is happening very common, uh, very often right now because there are a lot of personal branding um, coaches and personal branding consultants teaching you guys to build personal brand. So personal brand is, is just a projection of an outer confidence that may not exist. So I, I think it's better to work on your personal growth, work on your skills. That's when the real confidence will come in. So I hope that that, that helps, um, maybe not just for Mohit, but for everyone else who's listening also, if you feel that it's something that you are facing. Okay, next question. Um, I think we only have a couple more minutes for questions, but I'll probably answer three more. Okay, so next question is from Alok. How to improve leadership skills? The first thing is to, um, to reflect on yourself. You, you need to know what you are good at and what you're not good at. What you're good at and not good at. Because if, if you don't know, right, then how, how to improve? And the next thing is start by looking at your commitments. So leadership is basically leading yourself and other people. So how are, the, are they, what, are, what ways that you said that you were, going, you were going to do something, promise to do something, but it actually didn't happen? So that is a problem that you are currently having, basically managing yourself, right? If, if you can't manage yourself, I always tell people, if you can't manage yourself, you, you better be thankful that you are not managing a team of 20 people because it will be ultimate chaos. Because I, I currently have clients, even working 10 years as a director, finding it very difficult to manage other people. Because And then when I review with them how they are managing their day is in a mess. They are also not sure how they are spending their time, they are over-committing and so forth. So, so list down all your commitments and start fulfilling them one by one. Because that's how you can manage yourself and make sure that you only commit to things and only promise things that you can actually do. That I would say that is the first step. All right? Okay, next question from Sintu Kumar. I'm an introvert personality. Please guide the way to transform into extrovert nature? Actually, this is the wrong question because as an introvert, you can never become an extrovert, never. And if you feel that that is what you want, then that, that is a very big problem in itself. So you see right now in society right now, if you tell people you're an introvert, people tend to think that you are very weird. It's really not true. Essentially, introvert and extrovert is just how you spend your energy. So I like to use um, battery. So an introvert, right? your battery is 100% every day. So you start your day 100%. And as you go through your day, it depletes, depletes, depletes. The more you spend time going out, talking to people, attending meetings and so forth, it depletes. And once it goes to zero, you need to go home. So that, that's for me. I'm actually an introvert. But extrovert is very different. Extrovert's battery, whenever they talk to people or they see something exciting, it keeps going back to 100%. Going back to 100%. So you're, because extrovert is a person that is very um, easily motivated by different things. So one thing is to realize that for the introvert personality, it's also very powerful. So for example, introverts are able to focus better because you see extroverts, they are busy talking. They cannot focus. Most of the time when I talk to extroverts, it's very frustrating because they don't really listen to me. So I have to repeat my points like three times, four times. Um, but knowing that actually it's okay. What you are actually trying to ask is confidence to speak up. So actually, I'm also a very... Um, a strong introvert and people find it very funny that I can actually do these kind of speeches and do this kind of talks. It's because over the years, I've learned how to express myself and really speak up and express myself and communicate very clearly. So it just proves to you that you don't need to be an extrovert, but you need to accept your, the strengths that you have as an introvert. So if you have some time after this, um, this webinar, I do have a YouTube podcast series um, called Introverts Unite. Unite episode 12 to 17, where you can hear, listen, listen a bit more to understand your um, introvert personality and some of the, the common um, challenges and tips that I share. So I also have a series for extroverts. I think it's episode 18 to 23. So you can just head on over to my YouTube and just listen to that. Hopefully that gives a bit more perspective that I, I, cannot, I can't cover during today's webinar. Okay, so I'll probably look at Aditya's 
final question. How can we improve our interview skills? Number one, you need to actually list down what do you think you are good at and list down in stories. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll rephrase it. So everything that you write in your resume, you need to know 100% what you have written. Because I've also interviewed people. When they come in, they, started, they start telling me things that, did, that didn't appear in their resume. So to me, that's already a big flag. Because sometimes that if you tend to apply for different, uh, different kind of companies and you tweak your resume bits and pieces and you cannot explain that, it's not the same, that's a problem. So make sure that you are really, really familiar with what you have written. But I think practice. And also be able to share stories. So sometimes, you know, in the resume, they, they will put there, oh, uh, I participated in this project, in this, in this engineering project at, you know, last year. So what do you think the interviewer is going to ask? If I'm the interviewer, I will ask, oh, so tell me more about this project. And then most of the time, right, the students will, oh, I didn't actually plan for this. So how do I answer? So make sure that you have an explanation or a story tagged to every single line that you have written in your resume. Otherwise, right, it, it will come across as you, you may have written something that is untrue, right? And that's not a very good impression to have. And always practice. So you, you can practice in front of a mirror, you can practice with a friend, but always practice, especially for introverts, especially for introverts and even extroverts as well. Introverts is because in your mind, it sounds a lot better than when you say it out. In your mind, it sounds a lot better. So you want to practice to make sure it, it comes across correctly as you want it to. But if you're an extrovert, you also need to practice because a lot of times extroverts speak too, too fast and they may end up saying certain things that they didn't intend to say. So it was also not good. So I think both personality types can definitely uh, get a lot of benefit from practicing. All right. I think that's the, um, the last question that I'll answer. And thank you, Prakash, for um, saying that it's an interesting and impressive session. Hope that you guys have learned a lot. Um, Maybe I'll pass over to Dr. Bijendra to, to see if you want to wrap up or if there's anything else that I need to be aware of. Or if you guys want me to show the QR codes again, I can do that quickly also. Uh, let me over to you, Dr. Bijendra. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it was a uh, well uh, and uh, informative as well as an uh, interactive session you have done so far for our students. And uh, I think, uh, uh, I personally think that uh, they are very much benefited from your session. Great. Yes. Because uh, uh, as I'm seeing the chat box, they are very much interested. And uh, <laughs> yes, yes. So thank you very much for your uh, uh, time and uh, your session in our institute and for the benefit of uh, our particularly university students. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you so much for the invitation. And I hope to see you guys on LinkedIn or even on YouTube. So hopefully we can interact because I do see more questions that I didn't manage to answer. Um, but like I said, what you can do is that you can connect with me on LinkedIn or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. So right now I intend to go live maybe on the weekends so I can answer questions, not just from um, you guys, but also students from other countries as well. So hopefully there's something on an ongoing basis that can uh, support your personal development process. And um, aside from that, I also have a Telegram group that I post updates. So looking forward to, to connect with you guys a little bit more. And I really hope that you guys uh, benefited from this session. And a final rem reminder is to make sure that you take action. If you don't take yes. action, then it just goes in, out, and then nothing happens <laughs> after one week, right? It so will, really, it, really important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It will go from one side and out from one exactly, side. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And uh, looking forward to connect and maybe meet you guys on YouTube, on my YouTube live as well. See you. Take See care. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, participant, please, uh, there is a link provided to you, feedback link, and a returns form. Uh, you can use it uh, for five to ten minutes. Otherwise, uh, then we will stop uh, that form. Please just use it. <laughs>